keep A the same. And there are several ways we can do that as well. So we'll, we'll give examples. So let's say example one, imagine we have a coil like this and it has n turns. I'm looking at a cross-sectional view of the coil now. Coil of n turns and the coil can be coming out towards you or it could just be a coil that just wound around and it's just flat. It's not coming out. Either way, it doesn't matter. What I could do is uh, all of a sudden I can now take a magnet and bring it out from out here and then I can take the magnet and start bringing it into the coil, inside of the coil. So imagine I'm bringing a magnet like this and the north pole is on the front side of the magnet. So I'm bringing a magnet, all of a sudden I'm introducing a magnetic field into the board, right? And as I bring the magnet, I'm introducing a magnet, magnetic field into the board and the, it's getting bigger, right? When, when the magnet is actually centered inside, that's the biggest. And then as I keep doing it, it's going to decrease, right? As the magnet keeps going that way. So all of a sudden, I am now introducing a magnetic field into the board. Uh, so let's say the initial magnetic field was zero and the magnetic field final is six Teslas. That's the maximum that it gets. And imagine I do that in a time of, of uh, let's say, uh, four seconds. Okay? So let's say this thing has uh, uh, n equals, uh, let's say, 25 turns. So 25 turns like that. And I could give it some resistance. Let's say the resistance of, the, uh, of the, uh, all the turns combined is, uh, let's say, 12 ohms. And finally, I can give it some radius. I can say the radius equals uh, let's make it uh, 0.8 meters. And now, based on this, I can ask a bunch of questions. Okay, what is the uh, EMF induced in the coil, B, okay, B, I can say, what is the uh, magnitude and direction of the induced current in the coil? And then I can say, what is the magnitude and direction of the induced electric field in the coil? And further, I can also ask, what is the magnetic field created by this induced current, okay? What is the B field created by the induced current of part B? Okay, the current that is induced actually creates its own B field, right? Now, these questions that I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask the same questions for other situations. Uh, you know, like when we go to example two or example three, so we can ask the same set of uh, questions for e each of them. Okay, so we can say here, uh, okay, what is the EMF induced? 
So the part A, the EMF, is going to be no, negative the rate of change of the magnetic field over time. And then the, mag uh, the, the flux is defined as uh, uh, n b dotted into dA. The reason I added the uh, n is because there's n turns uh, that the coil has. So the flux going through the whole coil as a, as a whole is equal to the n turns times b dotted into A. OK? Uh, I could take the n out. So I'll have negative n d by dt. And then in this case, you have b dA dotted into dA is b times a times uh, cosine of theta. So b uh, integral b dA cosine theta, right? It's the dot product between the b and the dA. Now, do we have to integrate here, or is this one where the b is constant? Now, here's the little trick question, OK? Because you might say, no, the b is not constant here, right? I'm changing the b as a function of time. So yeah, you have to integrate this. But the answer is, no, b is constant throughout the area of the coil. It's only changing as a function of time, you see? So b, I'm assuming here that as I bring the magnet, the b is constant throughout the all parts of the coil, and it's not, uh, it doesn't change as a function of the radius, you see? I'll do an example in a minute later where maybe uh, the b changes as a function of the area. But in this case, the b just changes as a function of time, not area. So well, when you go back to the integral then, you don't have to, this is not a full integral. You can bring this out and it'll just becomes, um, Negative n, a cosine theta. Well, what is cosine theta? The, uh, the magnetic field is going into the board, and the area is also um, uh, the area is also coming. Um, let's put it this way: the the cosine theta is one because the area of the coil. Okay, is either coming out or going in. It depends how you define the area vectors, right? But the area vector is either coming out or going in, and the magnetic field is also going in or out. So in this case, the angle is zero, so there's no angle between them. Cosine of that is one. And this comes out, so it'll just be d by dt of uh, ba. Right? And the area is not changing as a function of time, only the b is. So the a also comes out. And so you have negative n a db dt. OK, so let's erase these questions because we already know what the questions are. Now, when I say dBdt, this is not a true derivative question because b is not a function of, no, no function of b is given for you as a function of time. You, you could just do b final minus b initial over delta t. Okay, now we can actually put in the numbers. Negative, and then the n is equal to uh, 25. The area of the coil is pi r squared. B final is what? Six Teslas. And if you wanted to be exact on the direction, we could say negative six Teslas because it's into the board. All right? So uh, B final is negative six. Uh, and then minus. B initial is 0 over delta t, which is 4. OK, so negative 6 is the B final, and then the B initial is 0. OK, so then uh, you calculate that. And then uh, basically after this, it's just a calculation. 